Good afternoon. I am Dr. John Nordling of Concordia Theological Seminary, and it's great for me to lead you through Matthew 20, verses 1 to 16, which is the gospel lesson for proper 20. Um, so let us begin with the prayer of the day, the collect of the day. Let us pray. Lord God, Heavenly Father, since we cannot stand before you relying on anything we have done, help us trust in your abiding grace and live according to your word. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. So, um, there are several things about this collect that uh, are, I would say, directly connected to the uh, gospel reading. One is how it begins, since we cannot stand before you relying on anything we have done, um, because that, in effect, is what uh, the, the jealous uh, workers in the kingdom did. They thought that the owner would give them more because they earned, uh, they, they worked longer in the day and bore the heat of the, bore the, the brunt of the day in its heat, as it, the text puts it. But, um, and then help us to trust in your abiding grace. And so what was given to the least worker also uh, avails for the one that is most industrious or does the most good work. It's all by grace, nothing by what we do. And then to live according to your word as we're faithful uh, with the opportunities uh, that come our way uh, in our vocation. And for each Christian, this is different. And um, so it's a wonderful text uh, bringing us to a justification by grace through faith um, this text is unique to Matthew's gospel. It's not in Luke or in Mark. And once again, I am tempted to think of Matthew the tax collector and the guy that, you know, that counted the beans and, and minded the ledger, um, that he was uh, brought kicking and screaming uh, into God's kingdom uh, like St. Paul is and like all of us, kicking against the goads. And so how this uh, made an impression, and I do believe, of course, that this is spoken by the historical Jesus, but it was a message that must have resonated with Matthew personally. Okay, that's enough on that. Let's get into the text. So um, Matthew 21 to 16, and one of the things I want to highlight is how it begins. Uh, uh, so... Um, for the kingdom of God, for the kingdom of heaven is like unto a man, a house uh, holder, a uh, owner, a master of the house, uh, who went forth right early to rent for himself workers for uh, his vineyard. Okay, so one of the things that, that jumps out immediately is this phrase, He Basilea ton uranon, which I have underlined here. Did a little work on that phrase in the uh, BDAG. And um, apparently it's unique in Matthew's Gospel. It only appears there. And in the op opinion of the editors of BDAG, um, it's used interchangeably with the kingdom of heaven. Okay, so the, the kingdom of heaven and the kingdom of God. I meant the kingdom of God. Both of them are circu circumlocutions for uh, pronouncing the name of the deity directly. So um, I'm going to give you some passages now. You can replay this part if you need to get them down. But, uh, for example, in Matthew 19, 23 and 24, in, in verse 23, you have the kingdom of heaven, and in, Matthew, in, the, and in verse 24, you have the kingdom of God. So there is a place where they're completely used interchangeably. Then also, uh, the phrase, kingdom of heaven, just like this, is in Matthew 3, 2, Matthew 4, 17, uh, Matthew 5, 3, 10, 19, and 20. That's, of course, from the early part of the Sermon on the Mount. 
and then often, as it says. Um, and I did a little further digging, and it's especially used in parables, especially the parables that you preach through earlier in the summer uh, in Matthew 13, where there were, was it seven or eight parables? And quite a few of them have, for the kingdom of heaven is like, and then you have the dative, okay, with uh, hamoya, hamoya esten he basileia ton uranon. So that's in uh, uh, six separate parables. Six of the seven parables have that phrase. In Matthew 13, 11, um, Matthew 13, 24, 31, 44, 45, and 47. So look those up, and hopefully uh, there will be a fond memory from you there of preaching on those texts earlier in the summer. So your people have, have heard it before, and maybe you already noted it uh, earlier in your preaching. So, um, hamoyas, hamoya, hamoyan, of course, is an adjective that patterns with a dative. So that's exactly what ha happens here. It's kind of interesting, like unto a man who is a householder, um, an anthropos oikodespotes. So an oikodespotes is the, the master of the house, okay? And this is, of course, is not just talking about, you know, um, a householder, but of course this is uh, in the parable, uh, part of the parabolic world for God, or maybe for Jesus himself, Christ in judgment, as it were. So we learn about the king, how the kingdom of heaven works and about God's dealings with us sinners, sinner saints, through this little homely story that we think we know so well. Um, so an oikodespotes is someone that is in charge of the, that would be the pater familias, you know, in the Roman household. And then um, I have highlighted this. So you have anthropodespote here, and I think I can just about get this. I, I think that the same person is ha curios to uh, um, ampelonas, uh, uh, in verse um, 8, and then can you go down a little bit further, John? Can you scroll down? Um, I don't know exactly which verse it's in. Uh, and then you have um, oikodespatu, um, again, sorry. Um, yeah, right here in verse 11. Whoops. So, um, so against, there's grumbling against the oikodespatu, um, and in verse 11, and having received it, they began to grumble, engongidzon. I'll talk about that verb a little bit later. But I take it that they're all the same person, that, uh, that the house, that the master of the house is the same as the Lord, ha kyrios of the vineyard, and then desp despotes again. Um, okay, uh, uh, and then back up to verse 1 again. Sorry to do this to you, and I think I can put this away. Yeah, so back up to verse 1. We're working on it. There we go. Okay, uh, who went forth right early. Now, one of the things I did was I color-coded the, the time uh, references in this text. It kind of works that way, at, at, at least in the first kind of two-thirds of the passage. So he went forth right early to hire for himself workers for his vineyard. Um, Hama proi. Proi, uh, now, okay, first of all, um, I need to talk to you a little bit about ancient time reckoning. Now, Supposedly, there's a difference between Jewish time reckoning and Roman or Greek time reckoning. I, I don't want to get caught into that, but at least on the Roman side of things, um, uh, ora prima, first hour, is the moment that the sun comes up, so we would say 6 a.m. And then um, hora secunda, hora tertia, hora quarta, all the way through the Roman day. So it, this is before you have uh, accurate 
clocks or chronometers, so everything is measured by the sun when the sun comes up. So in the winter, um, night is longer than day, and in the summer, the sun comes up earlier, so the days are longer in the summer. Okay, that's, that's how it works. And they did, of course, have sundials back then. I know of some of them, and they were very accurate as they are still today. So I take this to be uh, Hama Proi right early. Hama is kind of a, an intensifier there, and then the adverb Proi early. To hire for himself, Miss, Miss Thosas the workers for his vineyard. So that's the frame that is established. And, um, and, and then uh, verse 2, and having agreed uh, with the workers, symphonesa, symphony comes from this. <laughs> so having agreed with the workers um, for a denarius per day, okay, of a denarius, you know a denarius is the is the word for a daily wage. That was the coin. It was a coin, a Roman coin that was paid, and Matthew would have known that quite well, tax collector that he was. Uh, this uh, tain hemeron is an accusative of extent of time, let us not forget. <laughs> so uh, he sent them out into his vineyard. So that's the frame, okay? Um, and, you know, we, we, we too uh, have kind of an understanding of laboring in the vineyard. I mean, this is passed from the church into, into secular society even. Uh, verse 3, and having gone forth, peritritin horon. So about the third hour. Now it's about, peri plus the accusative means about or around, roundabout, okay, the third hour. So uh, if, if 6 a.m. is hora prima, then the third hour would be, of course, nine, nine, eight, uh, 6 a.m., I mean. Then hora tertia would be 9 o'clock, okay, 9 o'clock in the morning. Um, he saw others standing in the agora, the marketplace, um, argus, uh, idle, not working, okay, so not connected with the master's labor, and it doesn't take too much theologizing to see that when we come to faith, we're immediately put to work in some arena where the Lord um, puts us to work in his kingdom, not to earn our own salvation, of course not, but nevertheless, um, good works are necessary, as the Lutheran confessions say, uh, for the brother. And we all have a brother, a sister, a needy person that God sets us before that we can work. And so the same is kind of going on here too. Um, uh, okay, and then in verse 3, and having gone for, okay, the third hour, he saw other people standing uh, 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 idle. Um, and apparently that's how hiring was done back then, and people would be idle until they were put to work. And a denarius is a good wage. Um, and he said to them, uh, go hoop agata kai humes. So go also you into the, into the vineyard, ace ton ampelona. And whatever is just or right, I shall give to you. So this idea on righteousness, that which is righteous and just, it, it has two meanings. One, one is fair, I will give to you, but it's not too far removed from the good old Pauline dikaiosune that he develops in Romans. I do think that Paul is aware of texts like this when he writes his letter to Romans and in Galatians and develops that doctrine there. Uh, uh, verse 5, and, and so they went, they went out. Hoi de um, op eilthon. Um, and again, Pollen de ex elthon, so going forth from the house again, peri hectane kai enantane horon, so about the sixth and the ninth hour, so do you catch that the sixth hour from 6 a.m. would be 12 noon, right, in the brunt of the sun, and then three o'clock, it's probably going to be even hotter, the ninth hour, uh, he did likewise, epois and hasautos. 
uh, and then verse 6, and about the 11th hour, okay, so let me, let me get that, that would be 5 p.m., okay, just before quitting time, in other words, having gone forth, he found others standing there, standing idle, understood, of course, and he says to them, uh, why stand you all the day idle? Okay, so again, this hauling tain hameron, the accusative of extent of time, and then again in the predicate position as it was used before, argoi, uh, idle. Okay, um, and they say to him, because uh, no one um, has hired us, hamas and misthos sato. Um, some people think this is just an excuse, but um, probably it means nobody's hired them. They, they've been there all day and they can't get a job. Um, or in the deeper way, they haven't come to faith yet. Uh, he says to them, go also you into my, uh, into my uh, vineyard. Scroll up, John. Put verse 8 at the top. Okay, and when it became evening, opsios genomenes, a fine genitive absolute, the, the master of the vineyard uh, says to his steward, his epitropo, whoops, I didn't want that. Uh, so, uh, said to his steward, and this is the, the ancient uh, Roman understanding that you don't handle the money yourself, you go through a steward or um, a warden, somebody else, a bailiff, who does the actual, hand, handles filthy lucre, uh, to his steward, call the workers and give to them uh, his wage, having begun from the last until the first. And that anticipates how this, how this story ends. So the first will be last and the last first. Um, and, and they went out, those that, um, that were at the 11th hour, so the last ones mentioned, and took a denarius apiece. That ana, I take that to be a piece. And they went out, the first uh, supposed, uh, no, the, the first ones came, having supposed that they would receive more. Okay, naturally, of course, they had done more work. They had produced more crop. Um, so, of course, they would think that. And so do we in, in our, the opinio legis that we all have. Uh, I am a good person. Look at what I have done. And I am a good person. Look how I have raised my children to be godly. And my offering and my work, um, we all think this, especially as Christians. Uh, and they took uh, the denarius also themselves, and having took it, they grumbled against the, the uh, housemaster, saying, these, the last, worked, you get the impression, only one hour, meon horon, uh, and uh, you made them, or yet, you made them equal to us. Uh, why should they be like us? We know we're better than anybody else. And Christians do uh, tend to think this way, especially faithful Christians, Christians like us. <laughs> this is how we think. This is how I think. This is how pastors think, especially them, the clergy. They're the worst sinners of all, right? Now, I wouldn't go there, but <laughs> you, you get the drift. Um, uh, you made them equal to us, we who have borne the burden, tabaras, tes, hemeras, of the day, and its heat. So here the definite article shows possession, and it's kausona. Uh, but he replied to one of them, but he, having answered, said to one of them, an especially unruly lout, who was maybe complaining more than the others, uh, hetaira, com uh, companion or friend, I am not uh, dishonoring you, wronging you. And then we have this question, uh, uh in a question which anticipates the answer, yes, okay? So did 
you not agree with me, sim ephone sas, it's a, it's a compound verb, and you expect that to pattern with the dative for a denarius, genitive of price. So take, verse 14, take that which is thine and off with you, hupaga, <laughs> okay? Um, that is to say, isn't it enough that you are saved? Is this not uh, priceless and incalculable to be uh, part of my retinue, part of my working people, part of the kingdom of God? Isn't that enough? You know, and of course it puts a whole a whole shadow on whether these first people uh, are, are are really part of the redeemed or not, or if they're just people that are, are, are good works doers, right? Uh, and, and many false Christians have this understanding. Um, I wish, I desire, but I wish to give to this last fellow as also I give to you. It's all by grace, and if it's not by grace, it's not given at all. That's the understanding. Uh, verse 15, or... Is it not possible for me, ex estimoi, to do uh, in my things, in the things or with my things, that which I wish? So you have the willingness of the master. He's not bound like we are. He can do what he wishes. He can uh, create a pot for uh, beauty and a pot for destruction, a pot for shameful use. God is not bound the way man is, or even Christians. Or, uh, uh, or, or is your, this is interesting, or is your eye wicked uh, because I am not good, but I am generous. Agathos means generous there. Wealthy, wealthy with the goods. That's what God is in Christ Jesus. And then the final bit, so um, those last uh, will be first and the first will be last. We have this, what I've called the topsy-turvy world of the kingdom. And many times, I didn't look at that phrase, I just ran out of time. Check that out in a good lexicon, a, a good um, concordance like Moulton and Gieden, and see how often that occurs in the Synoptic Gospel. It, it must have been one of Jesus' favorite sayings. The last will be first and the first last, and people shook their heads and rolled their eyes at it, but this was one of Jesus' favorite sayings. And this is, a, a, again, indicative of grace through faith and not by what we do. So it's kind of the same old Lutheran point of view that we, that we Lutherans are known for. Um, uh, we're not saved by our own works. It's purely by gift. And yet, when we come to faith, immediately we do good works that are essential. But we don't go to heaven because of them. Only through Christ Jesus and his great atonement. Now, you just go to town with this and have a great time preaching it with your people. Um, don't be too harsh on them, because remember that we all have this opinio of the law, opinio legis, and uh, you have it probably more than any of your hearers do, um, and yet you too are saved, and so preach this for all you're worth. Thank you very much.